Welcome to all of you that are looking at blending teaching strategies, technology, and emerging trends to create some engaging educational experiences. Now in one of our videos we had a comment that came in that asked how do we do a side-by-side -side style video effect in Camtasia. Specifically we were sent a website that we wanted to go look at to see what the effects were so that we could mimic the look and feel of the video where we were speaking on one side and on the other side we had some kind of media or something else popping up and appearing. Let us throw out a quick thanks to Audrey Coin for creating a cool layout for us to toy around with on her YouTube channel. We'll go ahead and throw a link to the full video below if you want to see it, but for now, let's see if we can mimic this bad boy and make some awesome video effects as well. So let's start by breaking down the original video. So here you can see that it looks like we're playing with two layers. Layer one has a speaking on it and layer two has the object that we are speaking about. In this case, it looks like she is primarily using the video of her talking as the primary track and narration throughout the video. So everything on the right is built to suit what she is saying on the left. It doesn't seem to be any audio track associated with the items on the right. That'll make syncing up stuff a lot easier later on since we're only worrying about one narrative and it's really easily captured. All right, now knowing this going into it, we really only need like two things that out of Camtasia make this happen. We need layers and callouts. Now, if it was me building this, I'd probably add in some animations and some behaviors, let it where it shifts us back and forth a little bit smoother, but she doesn't do that. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to go with what it looks like she did in her video. Now, as we play around with this, she's talking about fashion design and things, and clearly I am not a fashion expert. So we're going to go with something a little bit more enjoyable. We're going to talk about Legos, baby. We're going to do a Lego video using the effects that she did. So with that, step one is we need to lay down our audio track. We need to get it where we're talking into the camera and we run through that really quick. So we go ahead and we record ourselves. And as we do it, we're going to do one fluid track. No breaks, no pauses, just one track where we continue talking. This will give me a fluid track regardless of whether or not I want to put images on top of myself. But it also gives me the flexibility to use myself talking at any point where I want it. Now in her video, we can tell that she has a static camera set up in the back because the background doesn't change. So it's on a tripod or something similar so that she knows where it is always pointing. This is the case not only in her shots where she's talking, but where she's modeling the clothes. Because again, you can see here, the background doesn't change. One thing that she has done that's a little bit different than most headshot talking videos is that she's taken a video of herself from farther back away from the camera. She isn't just shooting a chest up scene, she's actually shooting it waist up. Now this may be because she's like showing off the fashion and the clothing and stuff like that, but it also serves another purpose. It gives her a lot more space on the edges and the top that she can move that video around on the screen without it hitting one of those crazy edges or something. So she can zoom in and then you can still see her, what she's talking about. We can do all that post-production, but again, I can zoom in and then move because I have extra spaces on the side. If we had taken the video directly of our faces really close up, then we have the possibility of when we move it to the side so that we can get that little uh, frame over on the right hand side, we might accidentally move it where all of a sudden there's no edge because we didn't have enough room to play with. So videotaping yourself further away from the camera and using a zoom feature or a grow feature inside of Camtasia is a little bit better for a technique like this. So I'm going to go ahead and videotape myself further back away from the camera on this one than I normally would just so again I have the space on the edges that I can move it around if I need to and if I need to zoom it in so that I'm closer to the camera I'll just do that in the post-production software I'm not going to do that on the front end and again all it is is for flexibility for me to be able to move that thing around the canvas wherever I need it to go to get the effect I'm looking for. So now that I've got my audio track laid down, I've got myself recorded on camera, the next thing I need to do is get my media assets for everything that I want to appear on the right hand side. And to do this, I think the easiest thing since we're playing with Legos is we'll just go to the Lego website, we'll search for the one that we're building, and we'll start pulling some images off of their website. Now in her original video, she mixes a lot of video assets that have movement and they look really nice, but then she also has some still images that are pretty impactful on their own. So we're going to do the same and we'll gather a little bit of both. So again, we'll go to their website and grab some of the images off of there that we need and kind of take that for the beginning of the video. 
But then I also want to go ahead and get a top down shot of some video of us actually building some things. So to do that, what I'll probably do is take a video with my webcam and we'll attach it to an extendable arm and have it shoot down from the top so that we can actually see what's going on with our hands on the bottom. Pretty easy shot to gather. And then at the end, I want to have a final product where it shows the ending Lego built. And to do that one, I think what we'll go ahead and do is use a $3 Lazy Susan from Target to go ahead and kind of get a special effect in there of it kind of spinning around and seeing what's going. So those are the assets I need to go out there and collect and gather up. Once we do that, we're going to start going into Camtasia and plopping everything down. Now, the first thing we need to plop down is we need to put that layer of me talking, the video where I was just doing the talking and the audio track on there. We're going to dump that into layer one because that's going to be the audio narrative that we end up kind of working through everything on. Now again, when we want to bring up the right hand side assets and show those on screen, normally I would use a behavior and animation or something like that, but she didn't do it, so we're not going to do it. What she did was she actually had cut scenes where it had something laying over all of the video so that you didn't see what was happening on the back side, and then when we came back away from that cut scene, we ended up having both of it, the left hand side of us talking and the right hand side of the media assets showing. Now to do this, we'll probably need to go back to LEGO's website and find some additional images to add to our narrative and maybe take some pictures of their instruction book or something like that to help fill the gaps. When I have those, I'm going to use a pure black callout and have it cover the screen to make sure that you can't see the video when I'm talking. Since I'm using multiple pictures of LEGO boxes now, the black box annotation will sit on layer 3 and serve as a background. Then I'll place the images we gathered on layer 4 and above and bring them in at a staggered rate so it draws your focus there and just it looks nice. I could group them together but for this video being simple we're just going to leave them on different layers. Now but what about layer 2 you might ask? Well layer 2 we're going to take a look at here in a second. When we are ready to come back to the split screen and away from the cutscene we need layer 2 to serve as a background for the object on the right. So I'm going to build this as an annotation tool where the border serves as a split for the two screens. I want it on a lower layer because I need the right hand stuff to sit on top of it to make the effect work. But then I need it on top of me talking on layer one so that it creates a side by side effect. Because in truth, it isn't a side by side, but rather we have a smaller area that's sitting on top of a larger one, which is me talking. All of this is just about arranging the layers so it shows the items you need when you want to see them. We then drop the right hand overlays on layer four crop it out so it goes up against that border and the split screen images should do what it's needing to do. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, okay, I like that. So we're gonna continue the same process throughout the rest of the video. Our narrative is gonna be something like, here's an awesome Lego set we're about to build, Here's us actually building the Lego set, and then look how cool this Lego set was. And so it's a simple story we'll end up covering. But again, for each of those pieces, we're going to use that same format we just did with just doing the layers and manipulating them so that the effect comes across. So when we're all said and done, let's go ahead and see what the final product's going to look like. Hey guys, and welcome to another Lego build. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to get to building with the kiddos, of course. Um, I don't, man, there's just something about Legos. They're incredible. They're awesome. They just bring you back to your childhood. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what we've got to build today. All right, so today we are going to be building set number 76204. This is the Black Panther mech armor. Man, I mean, look at this thing. It's got claws. It's got a little bit of Iron Man style detail, and it's got Black Panther in it. Tell me how this cannot be awesome. So you know what, I, I'm just excited to get into it. Let's get into it and start building this bad boy and see what it looks like in the end. Oh, oh man, there are a lot of small pieces in this thing. The nine-year-old is tearing it up. She's not having a problem with it, but the five-year-old, they would not be able to do this thing. So I'm glad the nine-year-old's taken out. She's doing a pretty good pace on that. So we'll go ahead and let her finish it up. I don't think she'll be have any problem. We'll be done in no time. I might be able to jump in there and help her out with some pieces here or there, but we'll see how it all works out. I am excited to see what this looks like in the end though, so let's get to it. Oh, now tell me that doesn't look awesome. You can definitely see where like an Iron Man and a Black Panther could coordinate up, put their brains together and come out with something that looks that slick and that sweet. Must be functional too, but looks great. 
super excited about this build super happy with the way it turned out so thanks guys for joining us on this lego build and i hope you get to join us for a future one all right so there you have it but let's go ahead and take a quick look at the back end camtasia file so we can see what it actually looks like on there so as you see here we had four primary layers throughout the whole thing now each time we did a jump scene we put the black background on layer three and then the images and video went on layer four or above i left the layer two as a right hand split screen background going through consistently after we first needed it until we didn't need it at the end and then the black box annotation that was sitting on layer three just ended up covering up the entire screen anyway so we didn't actually see the layer two right hand background then I put the images and the videos I talked about on layers four and above again. Lastly, my original audio and just the video of me talking stayed constant on layer one since that was the main audio track that I was syncing up to in this video. I added an extra audio track at the top just because I like background music. It wasn't really necessary to mimic the original video, but I like it anyway, so I added it. So there you have it. It's not really that hard. It's just a simple mechanism of getting your layers, putting the callouts in, kind of combining all of that, mixing and matching them so that you make the effect that you're looking for. Now, there's probably a million different ways to do this, and I understand that. If you know of a more efficient way to get this effect to work, go ahead and put it down in the comment section because we're all just trying to get to learn this thing a little bit better anyways. Also, if you have any other questions or any other things that you're trying to wonder how people did, throw that down in the comments too because we're all trying to just make these educational experiences a little bit better using this kind of stuff. So with that being said, um, if you like content like this, where we try to take technology and teaching strategies and blend them together to make your classrooms or training sessions just a little bit better, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because we're always trying to put out new content there for you guys to have some extra tools in your toolbox to make all that stuff happen. So with that being said, good luck, keep building, and man, I can't wait to see what you guys build in the future. All right, thanks guys.